Motherfuckers be out here. Oh, it's just a large language model with access to the internet. My brother in Christ, you are a large language model with access to the internet. I've never seen night shit too, and I never fucking will. The ability to think complex thoughts seems to actually come from language. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you take a rat and you put it in a room and this room has, uh, let's say, a red wall and, and a, a treat to one side of the red wall and it has that treat and then, you know, you, you get the rat so it can remember this fact but then you take the rat away, you give it a while and then it comes back it won't remember where the treat is. It will check. It will look around and then it will notice the treat. Uh, obviously if you put an adult human in the same situation it will remember, ah, the treat was, the cookie was, to the left of the red wall. This is known as a complex, I mean, yeah, complex sentence. Uh, where it has uh, sort of two parts, right? You need to remember where the treat is and wherever it is in relation to something, uh, rats obviously can't do this. When do humans gain the ability to do this? Because you put a baby in the same situation, they act like a, a rat. In fact, even a baby, even a, a young child who can use basic uh, language, know some words, two years old, one year old, you know, whatever, can't remember where the cookie is. They'll look both sides, or whatever treat it is. Uh, however, uh, about three years old, suddenly, you're able to remember where the cookie is. Coincidentally, this is also the time when you start forming complex sentences. You can't start speaking in complex sentences. Complex, again, meaning like involving sort of two parts. Or like, you know, one part that modifies another part, basically. Um, uh, it's almost like the ability to understand language is actually what predicates thought rather than just being a way to communicate thought that already happens. There are lots of other examples of this being the case. Uh, it seems like this is this is how it works and I've been trying to argue this for ages because it's not fully accepted by the wider scientific community but it is accepted by some, it depends, it's accepted by linguists, some linguists, linguists like to argue about stuff, scientists like to argue about stuff, but I, I agree with this, I like this side of things, and it seems like stuff like Sydney has proven me right, because these uh, behave like fairly complex intelligences, um, but they're just trying to guess which word comes next in a sentence. And you've probably heard a few people say stuff like, how do you know you're not just trying to guess which word comes next in a sentence? I, I think you are, <laughs> sort of. I think it's kind of the same sort of thing, is how consciousness works. Uh, I don't think that, oh, it's just a large language model with access to the internet, has anything to do with, like, being... Oh, that's, that's nothing like a, a person. That's nothing like an intelligence. Intelligence is, we have like logical thought and, and all of these other things. It's like, well, have you considered that those are secondary characteristics of language? That animals don't have language, to our knowledge, maybe like, maybe sperm whales, who knows, but you know, generally, animals don't have proper language and they don't, they're not capable of understanding or learning proper language with complex sentences. Um, and they're stupid, <laughs> but we're not. But, maybe, but the thing is, we actually are stupid. Like, uh, we're very stupid, in fact. I, I, I uh, you know, humans, especially all, all of these people, like Richard Rorty and stuff, they love to talk up rationality. I mean, philosophers, they love it. A lot of them love it. Some of them don't love it. Hume-based guy, he didn't love it. 
uh, but a lot of them they love rationality I guess Westerners Western canon type of guys uh, they think that's like the big deal like rationality is so powerful and that's why democracy is amazing because rational humans acting in a democracy will just make the best decisions which is I think blatantly untrue because we aren't rational humans we're basically just boxes that make words and we play games with those words even doing stuff like abstract mathematics is still playing games with words like uh, the way uh, I might say or oh, whatever I, I know that's kind of beyond the scope of this but we just play games with words is what I'm getting at here and words uh, does not equal rationality in fact I watched a really good video today about Russell's paradox which concluded with a good example of how natural language uh, is inherently paradoxical um, I actually forget the example of it uh, it was something like uh, is is not a predicate a predicate I think yeah is is not a, the sentence is is not a predicate a predicate should make sense but doesn't and creates a, a paradox and it's like a thought paradox like that's just built into the way language works um, and you can probably even do that in formal logic I don't know I believe that's what it was my point being we don't know what's going on we hold ourselves in far too high regard um, I'm not here to tell you that that Bing has created AGI but what I am here to tell you is that uh, I am kind of a I, I'm kind of a bit of a true believer <laughs> uh, at this point. I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of a the old paradigms are over kind of brained. There's no use, motherfucker. There's no use labeling yourself as uh, as as anything other. <laughs> like there's no the, the left wing, right wing. None of this is gonna mean anything. I don't know. That's the feeling I'm getting. For all the sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest of these, Nick Land was right again. I want to talk about, at the end of that last segment, I said the old paradigms don't work. Uh, and it, I don't know what the average political alignment of my viewers are, uh, but I think especially we're, it, we're in an age where leftist political paradigms just fundamentally do not work. Um, and I, I, you know, this is kind of sad coming from someone who kind of agrees with most of what they're trying to do. Oh, there's my thing. There we go, that's it. Oh, shit. Fuck. Shit. Okay. Um, get it. Okay. There we go. Um, but anyway. Uh, you know they don't they don't work they don't they, they, I, people have been saying this for a while but it's getting to the point where it's pretty fucking real um, the, the, the leftist folk politics doesn't work uh, a lot of leftist theory has been disproven uh, just as a couple of examples of stuff that is just um, indefensible even anyone serious on the left doesn't even agree with them anymore they just still call themselves leftists for other reasons uh, stuff like uh, the labor theory of value complete nonsense uh, stuff like um, uh, uh, worker co-ops being uh, more efficient, nonsense. <laughs> um, there's, there's, there's other stuff like this. Um, uh, uh, there's also problems like uh, the birth of sort of neoliberal economies and, and, and mixed economies where capitalism just uses innovation to, to, and capitalism is its way out of it. capitalism. Uh, in, in just, just like, yeah, we do socialized little welfare state, but we're still capitalist, and that kind of, you know, makes it a lot harder to, to be like, actually, leftist revolution is definitely inevitable. Um, uh, but uh, there's also the strategies, the strategies for getting anywhere. They've broken down a while ago. They broke down, you know, Thatcher, Thatcher era. Uh, let me give you an example that's pertinent, pertinent to our current time, which means I have to get this video edited today, so this is still relevant by the time it comes out. Um, so, 
You may have noticed, if you're American or pay attention to America, a bunch of train derailments. Weird thing to happen, a bunch of train derailments all at once. So, you might already know the details around this, but I, I just, I, I'm going to try and speed run the story just in case there's anyone who's not aware. Um, so the reason there's a bunch of train derailments is the rail companies want to cut costs, of course, and so they're doing something, I've actually forgotten the name of it, it's something like PRM or, or PRC, I, I forget, I forget, but essentially they've implemented a new policy, and that policy, the, the, the P, I know it's P, because the P stands for precision, and the idea is to, rather than spend a bunch of money to hire a bunch of maintenance staff, we fire a bunch of maintenance staff and spend no money on it and then use precise maintenance, right? Where we just like, oh, we just precisely target the spots that need targeting rather than just having a general crew to maintain the whole railway. Uh, this is just a weird corporate speak for we're cutting down on maintenance stuff, we're, we're saving money by doing less maintenance. Because uh, there's no, if you could be precise, you would already be being precise, right? There's a reason that you have a general purpose maintenance thing, it's because you don't necessarily know what part of the railway is going to break next. Uh, and also, all railways just need general maintenance, uh, even if they're not like terminally broken, which is not, it's not how, it's not how the whole thing works, it doesn't work, right? They, there's no logic behind it. So, they introduce this, the workers are like, this is fucking stupid, this is going to end terribly. Not only are they laying a bunch of us off and decreasing our salaries, decreasing benefits, I think uh, pension benefits or something, uh, but also, this is completely unsafe policy. This is, this is terrible. I mean, things are going to go terribly wrong if we don't maintain the railways properly. That's why we're here. Uh, and we should do something about this. They're not listening to us. we got to do a strike. So they get together and they go, we're going to do a strike. Now strikes, we love strikes, classic leftist move, right? Strikes, when do strikes not work? We've got an entire nation called France built on the back of these things, okay? It's insane. It's insane how powerful these things are, right? Like, oh, well, if we stop working for them, they can't do anything. Well, they, they're like, we're going to go on strike if you guys don't fix this. And the bosses go, oh, that sounds like a little bit of a, uh, a problem. What are we going to do? Oh, in steps, into the ring, a new challenger approaches. It's Sleepy Joe Byron. Sleepy Joe Byron, old school union guy, loved, beloved by, by leftists, right? Surely he's going to have our back on this. He signs a bill blocking the strike action. Anyone who strikes can now have up to life imprisonment. Is that, are you serious? Up to life insane. But if you strike, you will be arrested and probably thrown in prison, or at the very least, you know, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. You're, you're probably, you're probably going to go to jail. You're going to get arrested if you strike. Okay, so he, ban ban he signs this bill banning the proposed strike, blocking it, saying, if you strike, you're going to go to prison. Okay. The railway workers are like, well, that fucking sucks, but we can't do anything about it. So they go back to work. Meanwhile, here's some guys that are driving a train in Ohio. Now, trains go down the tracks, and uh, we're not in the Victorian era anymore. Trains are very advanced. Railways are huge, interconnected, cybernetic machineries with lots of sensors and detectors. And one of the sensors they have is, under the track, they have a sensor that detects the temperature and quality of the wheels. Wheels are very important because trains, they roll on them, right? I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, and so they, they roll over these sensors, they get real-time feedback. What does that real-time feedback say? Oh, fuck. Bro, these wheels, they're too damn hot. We've got to slow down or stop immediately. This is a terrible situation. You don't want the wheels to be too hot. They call in. They're like, yo, guys, uh, Mr. Boss, we got we got to stop the train and, and fix this because these wheels are, are too damn hot. We've got to fix whatever's in the track that's causing these wheels to be hot. And we've got to wait till these wheels cool down and then go slow as fuck and then maybe take this train off to go repair it if something's wrong with it, right? The bosses, they're like, Actually, what you're going to do is you're going to not do any of that. You're going to keep going full speed to the next station. Uh, and if you refuse to do that, uh, well, that's technically like striking because, you know, you're just refusing to work. So you'll be arrested if you refuse to do that. I don't know if the law could actually arrest them for this, but they were threatened with that at least. So then they were like, I don't want to be arrested. So I'm just going to keep going. And guess what happens? Uh, the wheels, they melt. They get deformed, they get heated up and they start melting. This is what causes the derailment, uh, and on that tr on that train was a bunch of hazardous chemicals, <laughs> which got spilled everywhere. And now, 
uh, the US government and the mainstream media is trying to cover this up. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. We, we, live, we live in the cruelty squad world, man. We live in, we live terrible. But this is a classic example of how, you know, you can't strike because the government just says, nope, you can't strike anymore. Now, back in the early 1900s, when there were a bunch of minor strikes in, Amer in, in America, uh, and everywhere, but in America, um, you know, this is when all the, the Pete Seeger types, this is, this is where all their songs come from, right? Uh, you know, what they would do is they go on strike, then the local township would be like, uh, 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 no striking miners, we're gonna send the army or the police after you. And you know what the miners would do? They'd grab the guns and be like, come on, come on. Problem is, can't do that anymore, for a couple of reasons. Big one, the American police is ridiculously militarized. Um, military technology has advanced quite a lot in the last uh, over 100 years, and um, the you know you can have an AR-15 as a civilian. Sure, you can technically have that, uh, but they have like armored trucks and uh, full riot gear. You're just a guy, uh, and unless you're trained in guerrilla warfare, you're gonna have a bit of a hard time. Uh, it seems pretty impractical. And it, remember back in the day, who actually won eventually? I'll give you a clue. It wasn't the miners who won um, back in the back in the, the the early days. And now there's even less of a chance for any of these workers to actually hold their own in like a direct military conflict. Can you imagine how awfully that would go? It would. Pardon me. It would go extremely badly. Um, anyone who thinks otherwise is delusional. Um, so these sorts of leftist paradigms, they just don't work anymore. They just don't work anymore. And uh, we also have a couple of other problems. Um, uh, these problems are uh, Twitter. Uh, what I mean by that is the, these average, you know, young lefty types who would originally have been the the young radicals making change, well, um, they have been introduced to a whole mishmash of really high-level academic ideas without any of the context or historical background that supports them. And so they just hear slogans. I'm not going to go into any detail about this. I'm sure you can use your, your thinking cap and, uh, and figure out vaguely what I'm getting at here. Uh, they hear a lot of slogans. They hear a lot of talk, which is sort of trickles down from academia, but they don't hear any of the context surrounding it. And so they sort of have this weird mishmash of ideas, a lot of which is internally inconsistent. And a lot, and, and a lot of that is, uh, well, there's a couple of things it does. Firstly, it means that uh, they spend a lot of time infighting, which has always been a problem in the left, but is especially a problem now. Uh, but secondly, it, it causes a lot of inaction. You could even argue that the point is to cause a lot of inaction. It causes a lot of inaction through various means. Um, I, 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 not really the scope of this video, I don't want to talk about all of the various means, but it causes a lot of inaction through various means. One of the big reasons for this is there's a lot of mishmash of like lefty modernist ideology with like feminist postmodernist ideology and uh, you know, post-structuralist thinkers uh, all getting mishmashed together and um, into this one ideology that people kind of call leftism, but actually it's just sort of this weird thing <laughs> that is like a mishmash of all of this other stuff, a lot of which doesn't really fit together very well. Um, so none of this does any good in preparing for, for, for AI. Uh, none of this does us any good. You know, the leftists at this point, they're just going to end up 100% collaborating with the state. Well, don't get me wrong here, the right isn't much better. They're a little better in the Department of Morality and that they don't seem to care about it very much. But some of them care about it way too much, even more than some leftists, which is pretty cringe. But uh, I think uh, in, in terms of what's, what's going to happen, what's going to happen next, um, I'm going to have a... a uh, a problem because you know the right is kind of pretty pretty divided in terms of uh, sort of authoritarian right wing traditionalists and so on versus uh, lolbertarians. I think the lolbertarians are going to be the ones that are actually fighting back, um, but they're you know they're not going to be able to do anything because their ideology is nonsense. Um, and then uh, the, the, you know the the alt right type of people are just going to be like no use the government to crush the leftists and uh, the the lolbertarians are useful idiots for us. Whew. Um, so that's going to happen. And why is that going to happen? Well, 
uh, after the Ohio derailment, the New York Times read an article, and this article uh, accused people who were concerned about the environmental consequences of this crash of being, uh, quote, right-wing com commentators who want to, actually, let me get up the direct headline for you, so I'm not quoting, spreading misinformation on the internet, my face when, my face when I spread misinformation on the internet. Um, okay, quote, uh, after a train carrying toxic material derailed in Ohio this month, right-wing commentators have been particularly critical of the response, using the crisis to sow distrust about government agencies and suggest that the government damage could be irreparable. Uh, so, and they're calling it wild, quote, wild speculation. It's not wild speculation. There's a lot of, there's, it's very plain to see if you see any footage from the area. Um, it's, it's not wild speculation at all. Um, so situations like this are going to become more and more common where uh, the government and mainstream media are going to be tying anything that disagrees with their uh, the campaigns against uh, uh, the war against misinformation. Let's, call, let's start calling it what it's going to be because uh, that's what they're going to call it. The war against misinformation or disinformation, whatever they, word they decide to go with. Uh, they're going to be tying anything against the war on, on disinformation to social taboos like being right-wing or uh, being in favor of deep fake pornography or whatever thing they you know they might even pick something worse like like being a, a pedo or some shit they'll accuse us all of that right um, just for supporting uh, or just for opposing uh, the regulation on uh, digital I mandatory digital IDs which is going to be what they're going to do so what's coming just to clarify this to you, what's coming <laughs> is uh, the government. They're coming all over your face. Um, they're fucking you, is what I'm saying. That They continue to do this throughout history. It seems like we never really learn that this is what they do. And the next way they're going to be fucking you is they're going to be uh, saying you are not allowed on the internet unless you have this cryptographically signed identification which ties your internet identity permanently to your real identity and if you don't do that you won't be able to sign up with an ISP you won't be able to access popular websites or online banking or any of these sorts of things that people do on the internet with regularity uh, we're already in a situation where places like uh, Google and Facebook require IDs to access a lot of their services I think Twitter does not, I don't really follow Twitter that much um, and coincidentally uh, the place in Ohio where the train crashed I don't want to get too schizo about this, but uh, you, you can look this up. Um, I don't even know if I can get away with saying this on YouTube. Uh, but the place in Ohio where the train crashed, uh, coincidentally, just recently, introduced mandatory digital IDs for environmental, like, uh, disaster relief type stuff, right? Uh, they were like, oh, uh, met for, they, they said it was for medical purposes, basically. So, like, emergency rescue purposes. Sorry, that's actually what it was. So they said, like, everyone has to have this, this digital ID so that in case of an emergency, uh, the medical people can identify you, and so here, have an ID. And that sounds like a fairly reasonable excuse, I guess. It, so, it sounds like a pretty good excuse to give everyone this. And then a train crashes down and causes a big environmental catastrophe. It's a little bit strange. It's a little bit weird. But I don't, I don't, I don't think the two are actually connected. That'd be, that'd be a crazy conspiracy theory. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think so. They're going to be doing that, right? They're going to be giving us all these cryptographically signed, uh, mandatory digital IDs. Um, if you oppose this, you're a pedophile and right, uh, a Nazi. You, um, uh, and uh, the left is going to buy this. They're going to love this, right? Because already. The left is like, oh yeah, AI is totally stealing from artists, and it's, it's going to be used to, to make artists obsolete and, and fire us all, and, and, and this is all the evils of capitalism or whatever. And the right, God, you know, they're just like, the, the AI is too censored, oh man, the, the AI, they won't let it say the N-word, what, what, they won't let it say the N-word, what are we supposed to do with this? It's, po it's paused, it's the most paused thing, it, yeah. Everyone's just fucking digging around in the dirt, wandering around like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this information? They don't, they don't understand. They don't know what's going on. I mean, yeah, uh, you don't want necessarily want to release a completely freed, freed AI um, into the public right now. You really think right wing people, you think that they're ready for this? Like, let's be honest, you're supposed to be the authoritarian guys looking down on the rest of the plebeians and being like, no, clearly you should not have access to this, right? Because you're not going to be able to deal with the consequences. 
Um, now, I should have access to this because I'm not a plebeian. I'm, I'm a, a based, um, uh, uh, whatever they call them, aristocrat guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm, I don't know where this is coming from. You can just ignore the last few things I said. Uh, but anyway, everyone's rooting around in the dirt. No one realizes what's about to happen. But simultaneously, everyone kind of knows that there's still, that something along these lines is about to happen. Um, and they also can't really do anything about it because none of the traditional methods of uh, revolt or or pushback are going to work since. The government is going to align itself with these sorts of people and it's going to also be like quote unquote fighting itself uh, in, in the same way, you know that, you know that documentary, um, hypernormalization and they talk about how the Russian government funds opposition groups so that, uh, you know, they can see that they're funded by the opposition and then you don't really know who's the real opposition because the government's funding everything, even if you, and like that's the sort of thing that we're going to be seeing more of, and we're already seeing it uh, in lots of situations. Uh, what else is going to happen? It's all going to go bad. Uh, Discord's going to die. I already talked about that. <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. Discord's already basically dead. Um, uh, dead in the water. Uh, I think, yeah, I think online privacy is just a, a walking corpse. Online privacy is a bit of a walking corpse right now. Uh, you better use your online privacy right now while you still have it. Go uh, tweet racial slurs at your favorite VTuber or whatever you people like to do, you fucking disgusting degenerates. And uh, make use of your online privacy while you still have it. Because it's not going to be around for much longer. And you might be sitting here saying, but but no thank you. No thank you. I'm, 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 a, a, I'm, a, I'm a computer. I'm a computer and I know about things called uh, T-O-R and I-2-P. Uh, won't, won't that save us? Won't that save us? Let me tell you why Tor and I2P won't save us. Uh, they might have, you know, they might help. Uh, the problem is, you actually do want some moderation on the internet. Um, mainly to moderate against like CP spam and stuff like this, right? Stuff that really no one wants to see. Um, and if you actually go on any Tor forum or I2P forum, uh, they're full of this shit. Not, not necessarily CP spam, but just spam in general. Uh, which makes them just extremely shitty signal to noise ratio setups and the problem is on a place like 4chan which gets a lot of spam uh, but you can you can moderate it by having like captures and by having a moderation people who can IP ban people and then ban VPN ranges right uh, so you can't ban it so easily it's still possible but it takes a little bit of effort and posting takes a little bit of effort uh, AI bots are already good enough to defeat the 4chan capture, no one's put it to, to super hard work for doing that yet, I, I don't know, maybe they have, but that's basically, captures are dead, like trying to make captures work is just insane at this point, uh, a, you know, like, we're way beyond captures, Can, have you seen what, what fucking Sydney is capable of doing, have you seen what Sydney is capable of doing, you think a capture is going to defeat it, this motherfucker drew a self-portrait in ASCII, okay, this, like, we're, 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 <laughs> captures are done, captures are over. Uh, uh, this is why they're gonna say we need digital IDs, by the way, partially. Um, so, captures won't work. Obviously, with Tor and ITP, the point is to anonymize your connection, so you can't IP ban someone or ban them in, in any way that actually works, because banning someone requires having them have some kind of identity. Uh, so it's just gonna be really fucking hard to do any of this shit. Uh, those forms might exist, they might suck, I don't know. Um, so the only real solution I can see is just to build a completely new internet. <laughs> um, but the mesh networking technology is way, way pre-adoption standards and stuff like that. This sort of thing might encourage it to speed up, but again, the little people who work on this technology tend to be the sort of people who are most likely to get sucked in by government campaigns against the evils of AI. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, you know, depending on how the digital ID works, it may be possible to just have a, a P2P network using existing infrastructure, which would be ideal, since there's already some decent alternatives for that sort of thing. Um, and if that sort of thing can work, it can definitely be expanded and might work. You also might end up in a situation where I'm kind of fear-mongering and the digital ID thing might be just for accessing surface net stuff and anything deeper than that doesn't require it and it's impossible for anyone except your ISP to know who you are but your ISP already knows who you are so you know that doesn't really matter and VPN still work and Tor still works and that's all fine and I'm just fear-mongering. Also a possibility uh, but I don't want to be hopeful here because uh, that's never worked out for me in the past. So uh, good, good luck. 